10 years later. Hey, you've been practicing? You suck, bro. Back to your post. Not all practice is good practice. Most people actually waste their time when they practice. The thing is to get really good at something, you have four requirements, easy. Except without those, it's just not possible at all. So what are they? Let's find out. All right, class is in session. Pay attention. The first step to become an expert at anything is to pay the class fee of one like or one sub. Do it now. But all right, the first thing you need is actually repeated attempts with feedback. You can't get good without some practice. In last week's video, we talked about what to practice when you only have five minutes a day to do art. And while there are certainly many shortcuts you can take to get better faster, repeated attempts and practice with feedback is always required. Repeated attempts with feedback are attempts where you can tell whether the attempt was successful or not. For example, if you were to practice drawing anatomy but without any real anatomy charts or like a quality écorché to compare your studies to, you're essentially just winging it. Drawing from imagination isn't bad, of course, but it is if your goal is to get better. You'll never get better at anything in art unless you have direct feedback telling you, you know, if it was a successful attempt or not. This applies to anything. This is why movies or games are always kind of hit or miss. You all know game studios, you know, that delivered amazing games only to follow them up with a crappy one or multiple crappy ones and then going bankrupt. The problem in those cases is that the attempt is the game itself and they really only know if it's going to be a success or not when they release it. After which, it's kind of too late to make corrections, you know, other than like patching it over time. But you can't do that with movies. Companies will always try to get focus groups to get feedback before the official release, but the sample can never truly represent the general public, which is why they still often bomb. And the same could be said of the art we post on social media and how well or how bad it's received by fans. I always recommend to my students that they share frequent work in progress images as a means to get feedback, you know, before the artwork is completely done. Students of my art program, for example, have a big private Discord community to help get that immediate feedback on their work in progress. I would have died to have something like that when I was younger. But even if you're on your own, always make sure you have something to double check what you're drawing to make sure it's actually correct. Otherwise, it's literally impossible to get good. So repeated attempts with feedback, the first requirement. And this brings me to the second thing you need to get good at anything, timely feedback. So we know feedback is needed, but when you get it is equally as important. The shortest amount of time between the attempt and the feedback the better. Basically, that's what it is. We all learn by recognizing patterns, things that we can make sense of, and that we can confidently repeat expecting a specific result. But art recruiters, like working at studios, for example, like game studios, they might have some idea of what good and bad art is, but for them to know for a fact, you know, if the junior artist they decided to hire was the right call or not, well, that might take years. The feedback is super delayed in their case. They have to wait for the artist's skills to develop over the years, if it ever happens. So it makes it hard for recruiters to learn and adapt based on that delayed feedback. It's so delayed that it prevents them from learning any pattern. They might turn down an applicant who would then go on, you know, to be the top artist at a different company. All I'm saying is don't take it too hard, you know, if you get turned down by an art recruiter. They're in a profession where feedback is delayed, and so technically they can't get particularly good at that aspect of their job, specifically gauging if an artist will become a good hire in the future. Now, the next thing you need once you get timely feedback with repeated attempts is a valid environment. A valid environment for artists is one where the feedback is valid, as in correct, you know, accurate. For example, someone who spends 8,000 hours gambling, no, 10,000 hours gambling, would never be called an expert gambler. Despite getting timely feedback for each of their attempts in the form of winning or losing. The thing is you can't spot patterns in a game of chance, therefore you can't get good at it because that wouldn't be a valid environment to learn in. As artists, we need an environment that can help validate or invalidate our attempts. If you were to get feedback from someone who sucks at teaching, you know, what they tell you might actually not be helpful at all to improve your skills. 
it might actually do the opposite. Even if that artist is much better than you, they might simply not be able to explain it at a level where you can understand or benefit from, or they might not be able to articulate the knowledge they have properly. That would be another low validity kind of environment to avoid. You need someone or something that can teach you what is best for you to learn at your current level based on your goals in a way that you are equipped to understand. In other words, you need to learn from good art teachers, not good artists. And while on that topic, I've been doing art for over 30 years, I've been teaching for over 10 years. I think this channel is a valid environment for artists to learn, possibly, in case you were wondering. You should be subscribed. And I also have a quick announcement regarding my best-selling art program. From now until the end of the month, you'll be able to pick it up at the biggest discount I've ever offered for the Christmas sale. Check the link in the video description. It's just insane how much value you get for the price. And if you'd like to get a preview before you get the full thing, I also just released the program in trial format with a couple hours of classes and you can get that for just 10 bucks, which is also fully refundable if you then get the program afterwards. Links in the description. I don't want you to miss out on this. Happy holidays. All right, my plug is over. Now then, you get repeated attempts with feedback, you get timely feedback and you do it while in a valid environment, is that enough to get really good at something? It must be right. Unfortunately not. There's one more thing missing. Discomfort. What? Don't get too comfortable. Comfort is the enemy of progress. I'm sure you've seen it with your own eyes too. Artists you follow, maybe, who just stop progressing at some point, and then you unfollow them because you got bored. They got too comfortable. So to get good at something, you have to embrace the discomfort that comes with it. Always trying something new, something harder, you know, something that challenges you at your current level, like what I'm working on in the background here, maybe inspiring myself from the Grand Theft Auto 6 style of render. This kind of realistic cell shading almost, not sure how to describe it, but it's not something I find particularly comfortable. I'm working hard to make it look decent. And I think I might start to work on a spin-off series where I copy different popular artists to see what I can learn from them. Let me know in the comments if you have any good ones in mind that you'd like me to try and copy. But yeah, the main thing to understand here is that too much discomfort isn't good either. You have to strike the right balance between trying something that's somewhat uncomfortable, but achievable. A little bit of challenge at a time, not all at once. I've mentored students for a long time now, and too often they'll decide to tackle a really complicated painting without realizing that they don't quite have all the tools to get it done, and then spend dozens of hours and then just get defeated by it. And that's not good if it negatively affects your confidence. But with repeated attempts with feedback, timely feedback, a valid environment to learn in, and all the while without getting too comfortable, you should have all the ingredients you need to get really good, like expert level, master level, at practically anything. This works for art, but it works for any skill. It's always the same four requirements. And well, that's gonna be it for this week's class. Whip out your pen and go practice now. Oh, and if you haven't already, go ahead and grab my starter brush pack for free with the link in the video description. It's one of the two brush packs I use for all of my work, so it's free, but it's also some of my favorite brushes. Definitely epic value. And that's all for me this week. I'll see you next week for another YouTube Art School episode. Don't be late. Meanwhile, check out these other videos, maybe.